Hello everyone. My name is Nehul Bakshi and today we will be driving through the suspension systems of the vehicle and we would be discussing about the basics of the suspension system, their component, different types of suspension system and we'll later on discuss about the designing of the suspension systems and the particular type of suspension system used in a vehicle. So first coming to the what a suspension do. So basically suspension system provides a ride comfort by minimizing the effect of road disturbances and it improves the road holding characteristics of the vehicle and motions like rolls and pits are keep, kept at minimum by the help of suspension system. So like here we can see what a roll and a pitch is. So like if this is the longitudinal axis of the vehicle, the X axis we take it as. So if the vehicle rotates about this axis, then it is known as the rolling. While if we uh, take this as the Y axis and the vehicle rotates about this uh, axis, then it would be known as pitch. And as well as we have another uh, motion, which is along this vertical axis, uh, Z axis. And if the vehicle rolls about this axis, then it is known as the yaw. So now coming to the major parts of the suspension system. So we have the springs, which are the energy absorbing devices. Then we have tampers and shock absorbers, which are energy dissipating elements. And then we have suspension limbs, other components uh, to provide the support to the suspension. So coming to the springs, so first of its kind is the leaf spring. So it is one of the most oldest type of springs, which constitutes about different, uh, multiple number of leaves that are bolted together. And uh, we can observe that as we increase the number of leaves, the stiffness increases in the spring. And uh, these can be observed in the heavy vehicles such as buses and trucks, and these are susceptible to the sagging. So now coming to the torsion bar. So torsion bar is another type of spring which is attached at one end to the vehicle body and to the another end with the suspension system. And the vertical motion of the wheel assembly results in the twist of the torsion bar. So like in this image, we can see the torsion bar is uh, connected to the chassis mount at one end, while to the suspension system, in a wheel assembly to the another end. And the vertical motion of this wheel assembly will result in the production of torsion in the torsion bar and they are a bit durable and takes less space. So now coming to the another type of springs and these are the springs which are imagined by most of us whenever we talk about a spring used in a vehicle or as well as whenever we talk about the whole suspension system. So these are the coil springs. So these are steel rod wrapped around a coil and are effective only along the axis or only along their axis. So that's why they require an additional elements to provide support to the suspension along the lateral and the longitudinal direction. And they are somewhat compact in nature and requires a less amount of space. So coming to the another type of spring, which is a kind of different in its type. And these are the air or the pneumatic springs which makes up a new type of suspension system known as the air suspension. And these can be seen in mostly in heavy vehicles like trucks and buses and compromises of compressors, storage reservoirs, control system and the rubber cylinder. So uh, basically like in this image, we can see how the uh, rubber bags are used, air bags are used and the expansion and the compression of the air is used to maintain the levels of the vehicle. So now coming to the another part of the suspension system, which is the dampers, also known as the shock absorbers. And these are the devices that converts the kinetic energy that is received by the vehicle through external sources to the thermal energy. And that is uh, when then another time dissipated. So these are connected between the vehicle frame and the wheel assembly. 
so what happens inside the damper is that the damper has a piston inside it uh, and it's uh, in the cylinder known as the pressure cylinder and the piston is immersed in an oil which is almost incompressible so like if there is a uh, motion in the vehicle which is the kinetic energy then it results in the uh, upward and downward motion of the piston uh, throughout in the oil so what happens is that there are small orifices in the uh, piston so whenever for example the uh, piston moves from the upward direction to the lower direction then the oil inside the damper will move from the lower direction to the up, upward direction and which will uh, results in the transfer of kinetic energy to the thermal energy as the oil has some of the viscous, viscous properties. So this results in the absorbing of the shock and the two cycles of the dampers are the compression when the piston moves from upward direction to the downward direction and from when the piston moves from the downward direction to the upward direction it's the extension. So like compression happens when the vehicle moves on a speed breakers, moves through a speed breakers. And like extension in the piston can be uh, seen when the vehicle moves through a pothole. So now coming to another part of the suspension, which is the sway bars or the anti-roll bars. So as the name suggests, these help to reduce the body roll of a vehicle during uh, cornerings. So like we observed previously what a roll is, uh, here we can see that this motion is known as the roll along this x-axis. So this anti-roll bars try to resist this rolling as this can be devastating if the rolling happens suddenly. So these are connected to the opposite sides of the wheel, like left and right uh, wheels are connected to this uh, sway bars. And here we can see the position of a sway bar in a vehicle. So now coming to the types of suspension. So we uh, have, uh, can see the types of suspension from different perspectives. So like if we see from the perspective of performance, then we have passive suspensions, semi-active suspensions, active suspensions, while with the perspective of connection with the wheel, we have dependent suspensions and independent suspensions. So now coming to the passive suspension. So it it's just a simple type of suspension system, which has spring and shock absorbers and no complex or electronic devices are being used. And this is the reason that it leads to the compromisation between the right comfort and the roll holding capacity, as they do not use any advanced or complex techniques. And the, another is the semi-active suspension, which is a bit advanced than the passive suspension, as they use a different type of damper known as the twin tube damper, by, uh, rather than the monotube damper. So what happens is that I explained the monotube damper, how the piston moves, uh, if it moves from upward direction to lower direction, then oil will move through the orifices of the piston and will lead, lead to the conversion of energy, of kinetic energy to thermal energy. While in the twin tube dampers, basically it has uh, this pressure chamber as well as this piston. And when, for example, the piston moves from upward direction to lower direction, then the oil inside the damper will move from this uh, pressure cylinder to the gas bags in the side. So this uh, leads to overall increase of the surface area. So another is the active suspension or the most advanced suspension system, which uses complex engineering and are uh, consist of electronic controlled actuators which improves the performance thus increasing increasing the cost and the complexity so now coming to the suspension systems with the perspective of their connection with the wheels so first is the dependent suspension so it's basically the rigid parts are in this the rigid parts are connected in the left and the right wheel and what happens in this is that uh, 
deviation in one side of the wheel for example if there is a change in position on the right side of the wheel then it would lead to the change in the position of the left side of the wheel also it will affect the position of the left side of the wheel and thus this impacts the ride comfort and uh, uh, types of dependent suspensions are like solid axle leaf spring suspension solid axle coil spring suspension and the beam axle suspension about which we will learn later on and the uh, another type of uh, suspension is the independent suspension which is almost the uh, opposite of what the dependent suspension do so in this the uh, motion of the two wheels are independent to each other like if there is a uh, motion in on the right side of the wheel then it would not affect the position of the left side of the wheel thus increasing the uh, ride comfort of the passengers and the types of independent suspensions are used are McPherson strut, double wishbone suspension, and trailing R suspension. And these are the suspensions that are used most of the times in the vehicles. So, like in this image, we can more better imagine how the what's the difference between dependent and independent suspension. So, if we see in the dependent suspension, if there is a deviation in the one part of the uh, wheel so it changes the position of the another uh, side of the wheel what uh, compared to what it was when the vehicle was in the plane and if we see in the independent suspension then if there is a deviation on one side of the wheel then there is no deviation on the other side of wheel and it is almost uh, in the same position as it was when the vehicle was on a plane condition so with this, we come to the end of the basics of the suspension system. And in next video, we will be talking about the uh, suspension system, their designings and the types of suspension systems and parts used in a normal type of vehicle. So thank you very much.